Before we get into the main subject of this video, I wanted to provide some context. Using an old Raspberry Pi that I have, I've decided to build myself a gear shift indicator for my car. I also plan to use it as a pit speed indicator so that I can make sure that I'm going down the pit lane as fast as possible but not breaking the pit speed limit. Now I'm going to avoid getting super geeky on this but just to explain the basic uh, components of this um, system. Uh, I've got the Raspberry Pi, I've got the display that plugs onto the top of the Pi and then I've got this thing which is a, an adapter that um, and that allows you to basically plug your CAN bus into the USB port of the Raspberry Pi. So these are the main components and then you can see I've got a switch for um, changing between um, pit speed mode and gear shift mode. Um, that will be an external switch because obviously the display is probably going to be too far away from me to actually touch the display to press buttons and anyway I'll be wearing gloves so that won't work. But that's the basics. Okay so this is the original mock-up um, I sort of uh, produced on PowerPoint. So my idea is that after a gear change, you don't want the, all the green lights to go out. If, if all, the, all the lights go to white, that means you've dropped out of the power band. In this case, you can see I've got a, a power band that starts at 4,500 RPM. And then what we do is go up through the RPM range this is, the, this is the point where you really want to change to get the optimal acceleration. So 6,500 would be the minimum. If you changed below at a speed below that, you would definitely drop out of the power band. And what you really want to do is wait until it goes to four yellow lights, four amber lights, and then you would change. And then once you get into the red, red range, you haven't hit the rev, rev limiter my rev limiter is at 7000 rpm by the way but you haven't hit the rev limiter but you now are actually in an area where you're losing acceleration compared to what you would be getting had you have changed up so we go into two reds there now you're you can see 6932 rpm just below the um, rev limiter then you go to 7000 and the display flashes which is sort of what I've programmed into the um, into the software oh, and by the way it's programmed in a way such that you can vary all these numbers quite easily but the point is is it is it viable for me to use the lights in this way that's what I wanted to use and that's what led me to Nikki Chan's uh, video so let me let's have a look at that now and let's discuss that. Nicky Chan is a, a racer and a physicist I believe. He's a clever guy. He uh, produces some really good videos. Now he approached this uh, particular subject of when should you shift, when should you upshift and uh, he produces this graph and just to explain what we have here. The graph shows wheel torque on the y-axis and car speed in uh, kilometers per hour on the x-axis. And here's his proposition. If the wheel torque in say third gear drops below the wheel torque in fourth gear for the same car speed, then you should change up. So if we look at this graph, where the yellow line crosses the green line, he's saying that at that point you should change up. Now that doesn't give you engine speed RPM, it does give you car speed and you could reverse engineer it back to the engine speed, but that's what he's saying. Those are the points where you need to change up. So again, if you look for at the um, fourth to fifth change, it would be at the point where the green line crosses the blue line. I'll put a link to his video here, but one of the things in the description of his video, he provides a link to download the spreadsheet that produces this graph. And it's pre-populated with figures for 
an iRacing 992 Cup car, um, as you can see just here. Now, you can modify all of these, as it says, um, anything with the uh, in the grey column can be modified. So uh, before I move on to show you what I did, um, I wanted to just quickly explain something about this particular graph. You notice that none of the lines cross the other lines. Now, what he says in this case is that in, in this situation, you basically need to thrash it all the way to the red line and then change because there isn't a point where you would get an advantage by changing up um, any earlier than at the red line, which is, is an interesting take because I've heard other explanations of how you should determine when to change up. And one of the reasons for posting this video is to get, get feedback from you to you know, what's your experience? Do you have shift lights on your car? Do you have some knowledge of this area? I'd be really interested to hear about it. Let's change to the um, to my version of the spreadsheet. OK, now all I've done here is uh, replace the values with the correct values for the 116 Trophy car. Um, and these are our standard tyres, 205 uh, by 45 aspect ratio by 16 inch wheel rim diameter. So that was pretty easy to get. Um, the torque figures I've pulled off of my last dyno run. My first dyno run was actually had the torque measured in Newton meters, but this Maha dyno run that I had done more recently has got it in pound foot. So I've put it in. If you've got it in Newton meters, you can easily easily do the conversion. There's, you know, there'll be a straightforward uh, multiplier um, that you can use. Uh, the only other thing I had to do was, you can see this goes up to 8,750. Um, what I had to do was change the uh, data range. So in the uh, series here where it's got O, I put the O in there. I think it said T before. Uh, would that be right? O, P, Q, R, S, T. Yeah, so it did say T, 12. So I changed that to O and then the same on this one and the same on this one, etc. So that's just to avoid you getting a silly, you get a vertical line, I think, at the edge, end of each plot, which sort of upsets the whole idea. Um, I've missed six gear, six gear out and to get rid of six, Gear, all I did was I right clicked in the plot area, chose select data, and there was a six gear down here, and I simply highlighted it and then removed it uh, to get rid of the six gear plot. Again, you can see there aren't any points where the line for a lower gear crosses the line for the next higher gear. So Looking at this, it appears that the way I should drive the car is thrash it all the way to the red line and then change. And I guess that's the sort of input I want from uh, you. Is that your understanding or do you understand it to be something different? Now, I accept there are occasions where you want to short shift. Um, and uh, so you might not want to thrash it all the way to the red line all the time. You may not gain that much by squeezing that last 500 RPM out of the um, engine. I'm not completely sure. <laughs> so uh, yeah, like I said, uh, any input would be much appreciated. And then I'll be able to uh, make some sense of the way I program my shift lights. So I hope you found that interesting and I'll catch you on the next one.